Is it unethical to use the psychology of persuasion when you're selling? What even is the psychology of persuasion? Find out on this episode of Authentic Selling TV. The psychology of persuasion sounds a little sneaky to me when I hear it. It sounds a little bit like, ooh, am I gonna like trick people into buying stuff? Cause ew, icky, silly, slimy, gross, crush, most rest, dusty, don't wanna do that. But actually, Robert Caledon is a, a I believe Dr. Robert Caledon is uh, a psychologist who's done a lot of research on selling and he's done a lot of research on what he calls persuasion and my interpretation of the word persuasion means having people understand the point you're trying to make, having them see the benefits of that. But there are six things that uh, the psychology of persuasion talks about, and I'm a little bit fascinated at how we see these used in our industry. You can decide for yourself if you think that it's ethical or unethical to use them. I'll give you my take on them as well about how to use this, how not to use this, because I think that, like anything, there's good and bad. Uh, and, and, and what Dr. Caledon has done is given us a really great book that copywriters use all the time, y'all. And he's given us a really great book to say, this is how persuasion works. In the wrong hands, it could be ugly, but in the right hands, it can be really powerful and it can help set you apart. And so I appreciate Dr. Callan's work so much. So step number one is a word I always struggle saying. It is called reciprocity. And that just means reciprocal, right? So in the book, Dr. Callan talks about um, when you do something nice for someone, there is this psychological trigger that makes them want to do something for you. Now, you may be thinking that feels a little bit like trickery, but here are examples of how we do this in the online industry. If you have a blog or a vlog or a podcast and you are giving tips away, you are you are, you are giving your work, your genius away. You hope that people will reciprocate by giving you something back. Maybe a review if you do a podcast, right? How many podcasts have you ever listened to where they say, leave us a review, it helps us out so much. Or um, when I started and I gave away everything for free, I would say, you know, my only ask is that you tell somebody about this. Tell somebody who needs to close more sales about this incredible free work. So that's kind of reciprocity in action. It also could be uh, giving people your, your beta or your first round of your offer for free and asking for a testimonial in exchange. Uh, it also, I'll tell you how I used it when I was brand new. I was in a Facebook group with about 17,000 people and I tried to really be of service in there without wanting things back. And one day I went in and said, okay, y'all, I'm in here all the time. I try to always give, but I need, I need help. I need y'all to answer one question. I'm not going to sell you. I'm not going to like pull the rug out from under you, but can you just say yes or no? Yes. If you think you need selling to run a business that's profitable. No. If you think you don't, that's all I need to know. And of the people, interesting fact in that group who commented, 100% said they did not need selling to run a business, which is how this business, well, kind of how this business came about. Because if you can't sell, you don't make money. So that was sort of, you know, a, a reciprocal thing. I was in there, I was trying to add value. And then when I needed something, I said, hey, will y'all help me out? Just answer this question. So that's reciprocity, right? Do for others and then hope that they will reciprocate back to you. The second way that people are persuaded to act now is scarcity. We've seen this all the time in the online industry. It's what I call red selling. That means last chance, five spots left. And a lot of people hate this kind of selling. They hate it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that means it pushes your guardrail. That, that's what that means. If you're like, oh, could never do that, that means it pushes your guardrail. But I have to tell you, it's one of the most effective ways to sell, period. It works. So as you're thinking through the next thing you're selling, if scarcity or five spots left or 
24 hours until it's closed makes you feel gross, ask yourself, is there a way I can flip that and make it seem like there is a limited number, but not make it feel gross because scarcity works. The next way that Dr. Callanan talks about getting people to act now is authority. And I don't have much to say about this, but the entire influencer industry is based on authority. I like this, I wear this, so you should, period, right? Like, oh my God, I know influencers don't all talk like that, I'm sorry. Um, oh my God, I love these sunglasses, I'll give you one right now. I am not an influencer, but I love Hint Water. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'd be a terrible influencer, right? So you see me drinking Hint Water. My dogs have had it. They're like, I need in this office. And I look beautiful drinking Hint Water, right? And so you're like, gotta go get me some Hint Water. I'm being facetious here. But the point is, now I have water all over my lips. That's what authority looks like. It is the entire influencer market. and. It's not just on social media. It's why we see uh, Matt Damon talking about cryptocurrency. I mean, this is what commercials do. The next way that we talk about getting people to act now is consistency. And this is one I preach because consistency equals trust. Trust equals buyers. It's why we talk about having a quantity goal for your email marketing at least reaching out to your audience once a week, same day, same time. It forms a neuro pathway in their brain. They know what to expect. Consistency sells. All right, so one of the things that's really important for me, because this is the way I learn, is not just to tell you the theory behind things. And so as we're talking about the psychology of persuasion, understanding how you translate this research and this data into your own business is super important. So for example, we talk about um, reciprocity and how that's why blogs or podcasts or giving stuff away for free works really well. We talk about uh, authority uh, and, and, and you see that in the entire influence influencer industry. So if that's a, a, a tactic that you wanna use, you know, really making sure that your brand speaks to the life that people desire to live. Uh, and, and it's not just the influence industry, influencer industry is not just on uh, TikTok or Instagram, although it's become so much more a part of our life, but it is also what we see in commercials, right? So as you're watching commercials and as you're looking, if, if you watch commercials anymore, if you, as you watch commercials or as you look at ads in magazines and they have, you know, this most absolutely beautifully gorgeous or beautifully handsome human being saying, I wear this Rolex watch or whatever. That is an example of influencer marketing. I don't do well with influencer marketing. I am, uh, my life is too messy and I feel like I can't be the person who's always all made up and all the things, but some people do this really, really well. When you talk about some of these that we're getting ready to dive into as far as the psychology of persuasion, they're a little bit easier to do. So the next step or the next way that you can use this psychology of persuasion is with consistency. I know insert eye roll, right? How many different ways and how many different languages and how many different experts, can't even say that word, tell you to be consistent. But this goes back into some of the things that we've talked a lot about on this channel, which is uh, quality versus quantity. And at first listen, you're like, it always needs to be quality. And actually, as much as I wish that was true, it's not true because people are busy, because people are multitasking. We've got to also be consistent. It's like if you went to your favorite store, think of your favorite store, whether it's a, a, a Whole Foods store or whether it's Nordstrom or Tiffany's or uh, Best Buy or whatever, Myers, whatever. And you went there at noon on a random Tuesday and they were closed. You would be like, wait, what? They're always open. That would be an example of being inconsistent. So consistency equals trust, trust equals buying. And 
there are ways for you to add consistency into what you do. One of the things, if you are a corporate sales rep, one of the things I did was I saw the same customers on Monday, the same customers on Tuesday, the same customers on Wednesday. So they knew on Magnificent Monday, Kendrick was coming in. So I, I, I kind of trained everybody to expect that I would be there. That's a simple way to add consistency. And we can do this with our blogs, we can do this with our podcast, all the things. So consistency is the next area where you can help people trust you more by using Dr. Caledon's research on the psychology of persuasion. The next way, so I think if we're keeping count, we're on number five, is agreement. Now, in sales, there's a lot of talk about close with agreement. And there's a lot of talk about getting these, these yeses, getting close-ended yeses. And we call this Dr. Dreying here at Authentic Selling. And that's not exactly what I'm talking about. So this would be agreement with you, with the brand, with your values, with what you stand for. This is why, and, and, and you know what? Doing this in a way that feels authentic and does not feel like performative activism can be hard. So, you know, I see commercials where people are like, and we give so much back to sustainable water all over the world. And I'm like, okay, this is fantastic. And I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm hard on this one. So I'm like, why do you feel the need to tell me that? Well, they feel the need to tell you that because of this. We want you to see that we're doing good beyond making money. But you can also do this through some less forward-facing ways. So recently we've added to our website, hey, 10% of all of our profits go to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. This is important to me because blah, 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 blah. Or I'm always showing on Instagram, hey, we're at a Broadway show because we're a Broadway family. We love Broadway. And for people that don't get music, they may just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. But for people that love music or love Broadway, they might stick around a little bit longer. So it doesn't have to be about some social cause. It can be, heads itching. But it doesn't have to be about some social cause. And the world is changing so much because we are having conversations that even 10 years ago we wouldn't have about equality, about diversity, about how to make, you know, about unconscious bias. And those are hard conversations and they're needed conversations. But my point here is when you're using agreement, it doesn't always have to be a hard conversation. And again, my guardrail is really, really weird on this. And I, and I acknowledge that and I'm telling you that because I have bias here. Because every time I see somebody posting like, I did all this work, I'm kind of like, mm. and just show me in your actions, I don't need you to tell me. But different people, feel differently about it. So agreement can be with people. Let me give you a, a, a less controversial example. A lot of moms follow authentic selling and, and like to hear how I run this business and sometimes fall flat on my face because they're moms and they're struggling with that. So that's an agreement with my lifestyle, right? Other people see see people who are on a yacht and they're like, oh yeah, I want that for my life, which I wouldn't be opposed to a yacht, but I'm not going to take pictures of me standing in a bikini on it. This is a little bit of, you can get a little bit here into the like gag me with a spoon, um, old timey marketing or selling of like the dude. And it was always a dude standing by his Lamborghini, right? Oh, I want that. It's a borderline influence marketing, It's a, it, but it's, it's more agreement. Like, I'm in agreement with this. How do I get this? So just know that this is where your guardrail comes in. And if it starts to feel like it doesn't fit or it feels icky, sleazy, slimy, gross, pause and ask yourself, okay, I want to use this, but maybe standing on a yacht in my bikini isn't the way to do it. And if you feel great about standing on a yacht in your bikini, then do that. I'll give you an example of somebody who does this beautifully and I wish I was this comfortable. 
Susan Hyatt does this great. She will show you pictures of her all over the world. She's having the best time. It doesn't feel fake. It doesn't feel like she's posting it. Oh, look at me. <laughs> it is more like you can have this too. And so that's what I mean about this tightrope that you walk. We want to be really careful that when we are using this agreement with values that you're using your guardrail to make sure that it feels an integrity for you. Another way that we do this subtly is by having our pronouns on our Instagram bio, my pronouns on my Instagram bio, she, her, that's what I go by, that's how I identify. But just by the simple act of putting it there, I don't need to jump up and down and scream with jazz hands, you are safe here, you are safe here, you are safe here, and, and in full disclosure, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, and I'm gonna, but I'm going to make mistakes. But just the fact that I am putting my pronouns says I get it. Not everybody identifies as a female. Not everybody goes by she, her, or him, he. And, and so there are subtle ways that you can say, hey, I, I'm, I'm within agreement as well. I want to be really clear here that I'm not talking about this is about selling. So I am not talking about being subtle as you stand for social change. There's no room for subtlety there. I'm not talking about, ooh, let's, let's not piss anybody off as you're fighting for the rights of other human beings, as you're fighting for basic human rights. That's a different conversation. So just to be clear, I am talking about how you use this in the context of selling and specifically with these six tenets of the psychology of persuasion. Uh, in the fight for equality, in the fight for human rights, I don't think there's room to be subtle. I do think there's room to be kind. I think there's room to acknowledge why people feel that way and then say, yeah, but you're wrong. But that again is a different conversation. So the final way and I love this one because I teach it all the time. The final way that you can use the psychology of persuasion is friendship. And that doesn't mean that you have to be somebody's best good friend like Forrest Gump. This is just basic common sense, y'all. Would you rather, like product A is being sold by somebody you, you enjoy. You're in agreement with their values. You laugh with them. Feels like talking to an old friend. Product A gets you where you want to go. Product B might be a little bit cheaper, but the person selling it is a total ass and talks down to you and using guilt, uses guilt to sell you. Which one are you going to buy? Statistics say you're going to buy product A almost every time because you like the person. People do business with people they enjoy. They do business with people they like. And so this is good news because you just have to be a good human. Like that's the way you use this psychology of persuasion. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Uh, and there will be mistakes made. Uh, one of the things I am really bad at is I'm always talking about if you get an email that triggers you, don't fire off a response. But I am always the person who fires off a response because I'm like, ooh, this person's hurting and I don't want them to hurt. So I, And it gets into this weird like, oh, I didn't think this through and it can feel like I'm justifying and I do it 80% of the time. When I'd be so much, and it, it always is followed by, I've had time to think about this a little bit more. Let me kind of explain what I'm saying. And so the the way to use this friendship component is if you get an email that you're triggered by or you've got to have a triggering conversation with someone, go in prepared. Uh, take the time to sit down, think through, these are the points that are the most important to me. And from a selling perspective, be nice, be a good human. No, you don't have to be their best good friend and get in the friend zone, but be a kind person. Be somebody you would want to do business with. So the six areas that the psychology of persuasion touches on are number one, reciprocity. Nope, said that wrong. Reciprocity. I had the hardest time with this word. Reciprocal. Reciprocity. So this is do something nice for people and really they're more likely to buy from you. Uh, but this is also a case of don't do it because you want them to buy from I mean, like, uh, this can get muddy too. See, like, I'm, I'm of course you're doing it because you want people to buy from you. Like, I'm not going to show up online and spend thousands of dollars to film all these YouTube videos 
because I don't want you to buy from me, but I want, I do want to give you great quality content. So reciprocity. This also is helpful when you're looking for feedback, when you're doing market research, rather than just sending this blind, cold email, hey, I'm doing this thing. Can you take time out of your busy day and answer all these questions? So reciprocity is number one. Number two is scarcity. I know that triggers a lot of people, kind of like uh, agreement triggers me. It can, it can trigger a lot of people. What I'll tell you there is it works. You can choose to use it or not. Five left, price is going up, whatever. The next way is authority. So this is the third way. And authority is influencer marketing or celebrity marketing or You've seen, if you're on Instagram, you've seen all these celebrity giveaways like uh, Kat Graham is going to be giving away four Louis Vuitton pocketbooks. And, and if you follow her, you'll get 17,000 new followers and that's influencer marketing. The fourth way is consistency. Be consistent. Look, I can say this all day long and every expert can say this all day long. And this is one of those things that if the majority of experts are saying it, there's a reason. The reason is in the psychology of persuasion. We've talked about it here. Unfortunately, quantity matters. Quantity matters. I don't necessarily like it. I wish I could have one quality conversation with everybody and just be done, but that's not the way the world works. So be consistent. Consistency equals trust. Trust equals buying. The fifth way is agreement. And this can be agreement on the issues that are really, really near and dear to your heart. It can be agreement on social justice issues. It can all, and human rights. It can also be agreement on your mom or how you live your life. Or so, so again, we, we want to buy from people that we think get us, that we think either live a life that we're aspiring to live and they have like a plan to get there or people that show the truth of what it means to do all the things, right? So agreement. And the sixth and final way is friendship. And this just boils down to who would you rather do business with? Somebody who's an ass or somebody who is incredibly kind? And the answer is always somebody who's incredibly kind. Now, the great equalizer there is you can't just be nice. So if I am a nice human, but I'm a terrible coach, people aren't going to continue to pay me. They might buy from me first, but word's going to get out. She is lovely. I love her. She's a horrible coach. So then you might, like, like, like so you got to be good at what you do too. I believe it was Erica Learmark that said, the thing I can't teach you how to do is how to, and I'm, I'm misquoting here, but it was something like how to be good at your job. I'm assuming you're already good at your job. And... That's true, right? You can be a nice human all day long, but if you suck at what you're doing or the actual thing people are paying you for, you're not going to be in business long. So now you have these six areas of the psychology of persuasion and you have tactical and practical ways that you can infuse them into your business. You don't have to try them all, but, but pick a couple where you want to go all in on, I am positive that more people will engage with you, more people will buy from you when you think about why you're doing these things. And before you go deep down into the rabbit hole of which one of them am I going to, which ones am I going to try? Ring that bell, ring that bell, oh yeah, and subscribe. I believe in you and I believe in your business. Bye all.